What is up, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Nintendo Talk. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, as you already know. But tonight, I got to be on an episode uh, with Bill from Run Jump Stomp and uh, Lloyd from Nintendo Pulse. And this was a spectacular little episode that I got to do tonight, and I am so honored to have been asked to do it. Every now and again, I get to do these pretty cool things where I get to go on these podcasts with some great podcasters. And... Tonight was no exception. Uh, we did a E3 wrap-up, roundup of sorts, over on Bill's channel. So only thing I would say is, if you listen to this and if you like it, please go follow everything that these two gentlemen are doing, because they did a fantastic job, as you will hear. Uh, Bill is an amazing host. Both of them have exceptional radio voices. Not going to lie. Like, it is embarrassing how good they are. Uh, but with that, I just kind of want to let you guys know about it, let you listen to it, and this special episode of Nintendo Talk is about to start now. I've got two good friends uh, hanging out with me, Bobby. Uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can find all of your stuff before we get started? Okay, you mean before I blow away? Literally, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, he's holy got a, cow! He's got this some is weather. nuts. I got like a typhoon, just literally tsunami just hit. Um, listen, you can follow me. You can check out all my stuff on NintendoGuru.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at NintendoGurus. I have a YouTube channel, multitude of podcasts. Just you know, look for Nintendo Guru places, and you'll find me somewhere somehow. Awesome. And Lloyd, where where is it that everybody can find all of your stuff? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Dasme, D-A-S-M-E. I also host the Nintendo Pulse podcast and a bunch of other stuff over at ResTV, R-E-Z-D dot TV. And of course, you can find me at Run, Jump, Stomp on all of the things. Let's let's get, let's jump right into all of the fun stuff, man. E3 is finally over. Uh, I promised everybody that we would be doing a Voltron episode and we just... It, we kept delaying it because we couldn't get time, and we finally have time to talk about it. So, uh, first off, let's let's get the big stuff out of the way. Um, Breath of the Wild two, uh, Bobby. How how was your reaction to that? Oh my god! Well, I had been all along feeling like we were going to get um, not necessarily Breath of the Wild two because I don't think anybody saw that coming, but I felt like we were going to get a big expansion pack. Um, especially with Furukawa coming out previously this year saying like we want to start to implement a DLC strategy to all of our a multitude of games and so to me it just made sense like okay they're not going to do what they've done these little packs um, they're going to actually I, I felt they were going to do a big meaty pack and expansion and just basically hit us with 40 60 bucks whatever it was and then all of a sudden, like, I saw it in the beginning, like, when the dragon, you saw the dragon, like, the, the lights and stuff at first, I was like, okay, what is exactly is this? And then the music was making a weird vibe to me. But then when I saw what looked like to be one of those dragons that were basically flying through Hyrule, um, I was like, oh, my God, this is, Breath, this is Breath of the Wild DLC. And then all of a sudden, it starts to light up, and I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. I'm... I'm so excited. Like, I can't. I spent 170 hours in Breath of the Wild. Like, I'm ready to go back in a big, bad way and just revisit and kind of do the stuff that I thought we were going to kind of do at the end of Breath of the Wild. Like, I felt like once you beat Ganon, you would kind of go back to a post Ganon world. And that's kind of what's got me excited is going back to this world with new eyes, per se. Lloyd, what would you have preferred? Mm -hmm. uh, DLC? or uh, the full sequel that we're, we're getting? Uh, I assumed DLC uh, because they they said that they weren't making any more DLC. And then I saw the Zelda stuff and I'm like, oh, they lied. They were tricking us. That's awesome. Uh, but getting a full sequel uh, a la, I don't know, what they did on N64 uh, to me, keeping keep the same world and then just adding a different story, uh, that just 
to me is brilliant, but also to me, it means we're getting it soon. Maybe not next year, maybe not this year, uh, maybe 2021, but we're going to get it more than six years uh, like like it took the last time. Um, and I love, I, I mean, Zelda is one of my favorite franchises, if not my favorite franchise. And to get another one on the system when we normally only get one Zelda game per console generation is it, fantastic. And I love that they're doing that, um, that, that they're bringing that to us. Do you do you think um how do I want to phrase this do you think it really matters if it's well okay actually Bobby when do you think it's uh, coming out I think 2021 I think there's no way if they just started development it, it depends on kind of where they are if this was a DLC pack that kind of like when they were going to do a a remake of link to the past. And then they were just like, no, 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 no. Let's just do links awakening. Let's just make a brand new game. If it was something similar to that, where they started off and they were like, we're going to do some DLC, we're going to do an expansion pack. And then somewhere along the line, you know, Anuma was just like, no, let's just push through and let's make this something it is. I think if it was DLC, we would have got it next year, 2020, but I don't think we see it before 2021, 2022. Like, I, the, Zelda is a franchise that Nintendo is very men- meticulous with. It's the one that if there's going to be a delay, it's going to get the delay because they almost want it to be perfect before it launches. So I think we definitely don't see it next year. I think we're looking at an easy 2021, more than likely 2022. And and I'm fine with either of those dates. If we hit a point where we're like 2025, then I feel like <laughs> it's a huge misstep. But the world's done. You know what I mean? Like, essentially, the world is there. It's just a matter of, like, let's just add things to it. So, I mean, it, it's almost like a, you know, right-click, copy, paste. But it's obviously that's, you know, not the truth. But in that theory, like, you think, like, shouldn't be as difficult to do the turnaround. Because when you think about Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, it was only a couple of years between the two. Like, that's it was basically... One one year. So it holy crap. And if that's well, then I, I still would say 2021. Um, because that game, Majora's Mask wasn't as long as Ocarina, right? Like, time wise, like in, in terms of like play time. I, I gotta can't be remember. honest, I never finished it. Uh, I, okay. did, I didn't pick it up on the N64, I didn't okay. end up getting it until uh, it came out on the 3DS, and mm-hmm. I never any, actually finished it because yeah. Bill doesn't finish things. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. A lot of people don't. But I, I would say 2021, 2022, easily. And Lloyd, you agree with him? Uh, you know, the uh, the Nintendo fanboy who wants everything tomorrow thinks that maybe they're going to do it in 2020. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the year, maybe it'll be November release because you think that Breath of the Wild has been in development, was in development for about six years. It was supposed to come out in, I believe, 2016, but then they said, no, we're delaying it. It's going to come out on the Switch when that comes out in 2017. So if they were working on it for six years and it was pretty much finished in 2016, it means maybe this game has been in pre-production for a couple years already and if it's just uh, like you said guru a copy paste uh, get the whole world going add an underworld add dungeons add whatever they're doing yeah. maybe it's only going to take them a, a year and a bit from now to get the game out yeah. um, but the but the realist in me thinks that it's going to be a holiday 2021 release i think yeah. next year holiday would be just too soon yeah i feel I like I it's i i feel like i would be perfectly happy with 2021 or even 2022 but my gut tells me, and my gut has been wrong a lot, but my gut tells me it's coming out holiday next year and they're going to surprise everybody. It's going to be the big thing at E3 next year, uh, just like Breath of the Wild was. And I, I, I think that the or the reason why I'm, I'm kind of saying this is it, Lloyd already laid it out for me. Uh, this game, my guess is it was already done and they looked at the Wii U and they said... This, if we ship this for the Wii U, we won't have a good launch title for the Switch. So let's go ahead and take everything we've done, port it to the Switch, so so that it it uh, so we have that launch title. Uh, because honestly, the three of us would not be having this conversation if the Switch did not launch with Breath of the Wild. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so they they launched it. Or they pushed it, and I think that they've been working on this for a very long time, far longer than anybody is uh, or or believes. 
And I think that we're going to get surprised next year with a sequel. Now, uh, Bobby, you mentioned something interesting. Like the, you talked about the audio in that mm -hmm. in the trailer, and yeah. there was something in that that I feel like reminded me of uh, Twilight Princess. That was the one where he's the wolf, right? And, and yeah, you, dude, Midna, identical, yeah, identical vibe. Like I felt like whenever we got that whole the whole vibe of him going into the whatever world that was the dark world or whatever in twilight princess and you had a creepy the music it it totally pulled me in and i was like that's what started when i heard that music i was like wait a minute this feels like twilight princess yeah almost like, like somebody was talking yes but they're not talking yes exactly and and so it it was like a Midna type moment. Like mm -hmm. that's the vibe I got. But then I saw the dragon and I was like, oh, this is Breath of the Wild. This is definitely Breath of the Wild. And then you see Zelda and Link on that elephant or whatever it is. I, I can't remember the right off the top of my head now. In the in the cave in the cavern. And I was like, Oh God, this is legit. This is gonna happen. So I yeah, I, I definitely got the Twilight Princess vibes through and through, with, without a doubt. Do you guys think that they'll go to like? Do you think that they're going to take stuff from Twilight Princess, like locations and stuff that we've seen before? Because that's not really something that they do. I mean, yeah, we see like, oh, this is the Lon Lon Ranch and this is Kakariko Village, and it's always yeah. completely different. But do you feel like? Like, do you think Midna could show up in this? Like, like that cross game pollination, Lloyd? What do you think? Um, I don't know if Midna will show up. If if you look at where in the timeline this game is supposed to have taken place, um, I don't know. Maybe it could work. Uh, what I think is what we're gonna get is at, right at the end of that video, you saw um, you saw the the castle sinking, and what I think this is gonna do is unlock a dark world. And one of the biggest complaints with Breath of the Wild was there's no dungeons. It's like, well, yeah, there's 120 shrines. You don't need a dungeon, but people complained about that. So I think what we're what we're gonna be able to do is explore the underworld worlds um maybe there'll be dark link and all those characters will show up there and then there's going to be dungeons underneath uh hyrule and you can go explore those if there's four six whatever there is and that will be kind of how the new story plays out and it would be even cool if if you could even play through like kind of the main story uh some of the stuff from breath of the wild on top to kind of like a palette cleanser you, you're you're tired of the the dark dungeons so you want to go out and and kind of i don't know go go clear clear out some some of the planes or whatever and go do that um but yeah i think that's kind of what it's going to be is is sort of the same story sort of a continuation but they're going to add dungeons into it and kind of come up with the story beats that maybe set up the rest of the zelda timeline and why all this stuff existed in every single game i would ride off of that a little bit where i I've, I've been saying up to this point that I felt like Breath of the Wild to me, there was a lot of moments in it that made me feel like I was playing the original Zelda oh, yeah. over and over again. And leading up to this, when we had do been doing uh, prediction shows, I kept saying that the expansion pack was going to be kind of themed after Zelda 2 in terms of the storyline, meaning... For those that don't remember or didn't play Zelda 2, essentially what happens is Link, um, Zelda falls under a spell. She falls asleep. And then Link is trying to wake her up, and he's going around to find these stones to do all this stuff. And then the minions are trying to, or the henchmen are trying to kill Link and sprinkle his blood on Ganon's bones to bring Ganon back to life. Mm -hmm. And especially with that moment where you see this skeleton, which I, you know, I know there's speculation all over the place. I feel like that screams Ganon, um, Ganondorf anyway. Yeah. And I feel like that's kind of the direction they, they're going to take liberties. Obviously they're not going to do an exact ripoff, but that's what I felt was going to happen. But I, the one thing that I had been saying all along too, that I feel like they're going to do is by taking that, they're going to do a thing of like, you pick the character you want to be link or Zelda whoever you pick, the other one falls asleep. Um, Cause I don't see them having both characters that you're, that you're readily available the whole game. Um, so it's not going to be, to me, it's not going to be like a last of us or an uncharted where you have someone running along with you the whole time. I feel like it's going to kind of immerse you into this world and go do your thing. And I think that after so much flack 
uh, pre Breath of the Wild, where everybody thought A, Link was a girl, and then B, they were hoping that you were going to play as Zelda. I think Nintendo is going to kind of lean into that a little bit and let people play as as Link or Zelda, whatever they choose, and they're going to kind of go with it that way. Now, don't get me wrong, I could be absolutely wrong with all that I just said, but it's at least the vibes, that's how I'm feeling leading in, so, I mean, time will tell. Somebody asked Mr. Onuma about that, about whether or not you could play as Zelda, and he said... <laughs> Uh, like he 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 kind of chuckled and said, "Well, why do you think, or uh, why why do you think people want to play as Zelda?" Was the first thing, and then that like the person asked, and and uh, uh, he says, "Well, what makes you think that you will?" And the person gave the the reasons why uh, it wasn't really reasons why we think that we will, but more reasons why we think we should. Mm-hmm. And his answer was, "Oh, that's interesting, but I can't say anything." And yeah. I feel like if the answer was no, he would say no. Yeah. Because like that that like saying I can't say anything leaves it up to like, oh, maybe we yeah. can. And that's just gonna set people up for disappointment if we can't. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. I think that there's there are ways if if we ended up being able to play a Zelda, like I I, I hadn't really thought of your idea, Bobby, where uh, one you pick one and the other one gets put to sleep. I think that's super interesting. Um, mm-hmm. and I I like the idea of that co-op, maybe not co-op, but where you can switch between them, uh, mm-hmm. kind of like Last of Us, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. And I like that from a gameplay perspective, like uh, ways to like multiple ways to solve this problem and play through this area. I think that's really cool. But Mm -hmm. one of the great things about Breath of the Wild was how alone you felt. Like you felt so, like so much solitude as you went through that world, uh, almost lonely, but in a really good way. It was it was amazing what they did, and I feel like having the idea of being able to hit a button and switch between the two characters, or always having a companion with you. I think that that would be almost a misstep, even though it's something that I think everybody would be clamoring for. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, any final thoughts, uh, Lloyd, before we move um, on? <clears throat> There's also the the rumors that were coming out of E3 where there were some questions asked of Onuma about um, co-op and all that stuff. And he's like, oh, that's interesting that you would go there and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I was like, oh, I doubt that there's going to be co-op, but that would be it would be really cool if you had something almost like um, God of War from like um from the playstation 4 where you had whoever whichever character you control you kind of have this ai character with you and i'm like that would be a really good way to kind of mix it up and add other story beats without having to to create a whole entire new world you could have um different powers you could almost do like a uh, last vikings thing where you need to (laughs) use this one person to create a block and this other person to do a thing right and two people with Sheikah slates, maybe doing different things that way. Um, that would be pretty cool. I, I don't, I don't know if that's the Nintendo way, but it, but it got my mind, uh, my mind percolating a little bit about some, some potential future adventures that we might be going on with uh, Zelda and Link. Uh, if they did that, I'd love it. And if they didn't do that, I would love it. I just love more Zelda. Like I've been playing, I've been injecting Kings of Hyrule directly into my veins and and just loving that game. Um, so any more Zelda games that come out, I'm just gonna love. But uh, I don't know. This is it's really interesting. Those are quotes that normally Nintendo doesn't do. They, it's like we don't comment on rumors and speculation is kind yeah. of their go to thing. And for him to say, huh, interesting. Why would you think that either they don't have a plan for the game and he's fishing for ideas or he's <laughs> or he's playing with the with the journalists. And I think I think Nintendo knows what they're doing. So maybe he's playing with the journalists. Anuma is notorious for that, too, as well. Like he will just mess with people and do trolly things and leave hints in games just to mess with people's heads. Um, Cause I think what was, wasn't it um, in link between worlds, they had Majora's mask on the wall in, in right. his t- house when the, when the, when the salesman came in and took the house over. And then right after that, Majora's mask came out, people were losing their minds when they saw that. Like, why would you put that in there if the game's not coming? And he was like, Oh, it's just something we just tried out. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, he just does little silly things like that. So I love it when he does. <laughs> uh, so the other big surprise, I figure we start with the big surprises. The other big surprise were the 
uh, the 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 new fighters in Smash Brothers. Uh, one of them was I, I don't I don't really know if they were leaked ahead of time because a lot of people were saying a lot of different characters, and it might have just been speculation and conjecture. But uh, yeah. the two characters that we're getting, well, two and a half characters, I guess, is uh, well, actually, it's it's way more. Um, is the the hero from uh, Dragon Quest uh, Eleven? <laughs> Uh, which comes with? Do you, do you guys think that all of those are different skins or Echo Fighters? They're just Echo Fighters. I think they're. I think it's kind of like Bowser's kids, where you can flip through and just change. So different the character. skins, not Echo different Fighters. Different skins, yeah, not Echo Fighters. I think it's just different skins. Lloyd, yeah, I think I think that's exactly. You can you can be Pink Yoshi or Blue Yoshi. You can right. be yeah. Final Fantasy. Uh, you can be Dragon Quest Seven or Dragon Quest Eleven uh, yeah. version of that hero. Mm-hmm. All right, and then the other one is Banjo Kazooie. Now, of these these two, uh, I I know that first off, the the fake out was awesome. I love mm-hmm. I yeah. love the way that Nintendo is just toying with our emotions in like the same way that when like when one of my kids want you know says, "Hey, let's go get ice cream," and my wife and I'll just kind of be like, "Oh, maybe we will or maybe we won't. Maybe we should, you know, that kind of thing." They are toying with our emotions on this, and it is really really fun. And I laughed really hard when when the the duck hunt dog was was trolling us. I thought that was great. Which of the two uh Lloyd will start with you. Which of the two are you more excited for uh for DLC? Uh, personally for me i i banjo kazooie it has to be because i mean that's n64 uh, distilled into uh into its purest form uh, was playing banjo kazooie in games like that and and to have that character or those characters i guess back on a nintendo platform is awesome i was never a huge fan of the games but they but they were great at their time um i haven't played enough um dragon quest to really care much about the other characters um and personally i think we already have too many sword characters so another sword character in the game is just like oh okay whatever it's another sword character um but yeah banjo kazooie I, I i think that fits perfectly it's a fan service for the people that have been longtime nintendo fans it solidifies the uh, relationship between nintendo and microsoft so who knows what we're going to be getting maybe we'll get actual banjo kazooie games from the n64 over on the um the switch down the road or other things like that um so i think it's 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 a better character for many reasons um but it's also the one that i like out of those two bobby yeah um i mean banjo kazooie to me was the bigger because i get what they did um they kind of this e3 were just like here's one for you japan here's one for you north america go you know and just have fun with it and to me i feel like the dragon quest is like they they named the one hero because just like nobody really knows the names of the characters and they're not not very memorable. It's not like Cloud. It's not like Sephiroth. You know what I mean? Like those characters are just memorable. And Dragon Quest is very niche and it's very JRPG ish. And the audience is not here in the United States. It, don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic series. I love the series. It's the first role playing game I ever played as a kid. So for me, I get it. I understand it. But I also know that, like, these games are very grindy. They're very long. And, like, unless you have a lot of time to sink into them, they're not for this audience here. You know, they're more for the Japanese audience, which, by the way, they still to this day line up blocks long to get this game. It's the big it's one of the biggest franchises in Japan still to this day. And it's still at its core. They haven't changed it. Where they have Final Fantasy has changed the battle mechanics and the way they do the games, where Dragon Quest has stayed at its roots all these years. But for me, it was it was definitely Banjo, because I felt like that was the moment that did so many things. Um, it was the moment that one told people that like, hey, there is zero doubt now that Microsoft and Nintendo are working together, doing stuff together. Uh, it was also that moment where you realize that a year and a half ago or whatever, when Phil Spencer told Nintendo, like, you can take Banjo and, and put him in Smash. Like, people lost their minds at that moment. Like, that was the glimmer of hope. And then it was like, oh, my God, it's actually happening. So I feel like that to me was the just 
the moment of clarity where it was like, holy cow, like everything I remember, because I remember being devastated as a kid when Rare left Nintendo, when Microsoft came in in the final hour and swooped up Rare, and I was just like, why? Like, why didn't Nintendo let this happen? I understand it now as an adult, but when I was younger, I j- it just blew my mind. So for me, very similar to like when Square started showing up on Nintendo consoles again, and that crushed me when they kind of left. It's the same thing, per se, where it's just like, hey, you have this moment where your childhood is starting to come back together. It's almost like mom and dad got a divorce, and now they're actually, <laughs> now they're actually you know, it, you wake up in the morning, and they come out of the bedroom together. It's like, wait a minute, what are you two doing? You know what I mean? Like, it's that moment where it's like, something's happening here. We don't know all the answers. We don't know exactly what's going on, but I like it. Whatever's happening, I like it. So, so yeah, I, I, I was happy about that. I definitely think that Banjo-Kazooie is a bigger... I don't want to say a bigger get. Uh, I, it's a more impactful um, character to add to the roster. But from what they showed from gameplay, I really, really like what they're doing with the Dragon Quest character where you hit a button and it brings up like a traditional Dragon Quest yeah. menu and you can select what your move is going to be. And then you can like that. I love how they can take the things from the game that the character comes from and yeah. integrate it into Smash. And I feel like that's much more obvious when I look at um, the Dragon Quest hero uh, than it is when I look at Banjo-Kazooie. And for me, I have I have zero uh, nostalgia for Banjo-Kazooie because I have never played uh, any of those games. Uh, I didn't play any of those. I didn't play Ukulele. I played... Uh, Mario, I played Zelda, Blast Core, and I, what was the other one that I loved playing? Oh, oh, the baseball game. I don't know which baseball game it was, but I played a, a lot of baseball on my N64. And then other than that, it was PC gaming. Like, that's where I really uh, spent most of my time. But I I, I missed out on the Banjo-Kazooie uh, thing. So those were all the, the, the big surprises uh, what were some of the games that you guys re- like? What What do you guys really want to talk about on this E3 breakdown? Bobby, you want to start us off? Uh, for, listen, it's Animal Crossing, man. Like that's my that's my franchise. That's the one that I was looking for going in, and like that was all I wanted to see. I just wanted to see. I my my. I kept telling friends. I was like, I just want to see what it looks like. I just want a release date. That's it. If I can get those two things, I'll walk away happy. Albert, I, I, I thought I was getting released in 2019, but <laughs> when I think about it, it doesn't upset me because um, I've said this numerous times since any true Animal Crossing fan realizes that a release date this later half of the year is not good for Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing's bread and butter is spring, summer. That's when you ramp up. There's so much more to do. If they were to launch this particular game in the dead of the winter, it would it would just kill people. Like, it would be so boring to play that game. So I like what they did. I like all the new mechanics. It's like they've just given us... What I like about it the best is this, a couple of things. They gave us stuff that we didn't know was coming. They They basically opened up the creativity to us where we're doing inside and outside of houses. Now we're basically doing, yeah, we're crafting. We're doing the whole town, which for people that really love animal crossing, they were doing that anyway, but kind of gimped features. And now we have full range to do what we want to do. But the other thing is, is what I like about it is after playing four animal crossing games, there was nothing anybody could teach me about. I knew Leading into this game, I knew what I was going to do day one. I knew how to bells. I knew what I was going to do. I knew I knew in two weeks, I would have my entire house done, paid off, ready to go, and then start working on things. And now I have no idea. And I like that feeling of going into a game and not really, it's familiar to me, but I don't have all the answers. And I like that about this because it's something that I've been wanting for a while, but I didn't really know I wanted it until I actually saw it play out. So. They've given me so many features that I love, and, I, you know, that's how I feel. The way you talk about it reminds th- that that last part where you were going into the world and feeling lost uh, reminds me of 
the first time when I when I was in the beta test for World of Warcraft. Like I logged in on my dwarven uh, rogue, and I got lost in Cold Ridge Mountains, and I was like, "Where the hell is the city?" Like I was just lost out in the woods, and mm-hmm. it was an awesome feeling. And mm-hmm. I, I I I totally get what you're saying where. Uh, you know, you you have everything planned ahead of time of how you're going to do it, and now they've yanked the rug out from under you, and you don't know how it's going to work. I think that's really cool. Are you pretty excited for Animal Crossing, Lloyd? Uh, I am. I, I've loved Animal Crossing from way back on the GameCube. Like, just I've played every every version of it. Um, but I've played every version maybe a little less than the one before it, um, just because it's kind of same year doing the same thing over and over. The fact that they're taking the core elements from all the Animal Crossings on consoles, they're adding in happy home designer stuff, they're adding in pocket camp stuff, and they're making it into kind of like the 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 best version of Animal Crossing, and then adding crafting and adding um, the ability to do uh, like true housing where your characters can you can call your your family members in and they can give you some wood and you can use their cherry wood with your oak wood and make whatever table you want to make um it's really change it's it's very similar but they're also changing a lot of the formula of what made animal crossing so addictive for me uh which was the collecting aspect of it and 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 building an awesome house so uh, i'm really excited for it uh i i think that the fact that they're delaying it is a good thing um just like what you said guru coming out late would probably been really bad but in the spring makes total sense um yeah i i'm 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 hugely excited for it, uh, but I already was excited for it, so this was nothing new for me. Yeah. What What else are you excited for from the direct, uh, Lloyd? For me, uh, the the game, the biggest game that stands out uh, was a game that I was gonna get, but it wasn't gonna be a release day thing for me, and I wasn't super excited for it. And that's Luigi's Mansion Three. I've liked Luigi's Mansion One and Two, but this game looks fantastic, adding new features to the Poltergust, the ability to slam enemies, and uh, and the burst as a jump, but also to push things away. I was like, of course, yeah, you have multiple functions. This makes total sense. Uh, Guigi is nice because now you could play co-op with family members and it's cute and and quirky and weird and that's exactly what luigi's mansion is uh but the four player co-op mode the uh, scare scraper stuff just looks fantastic i watched them play that in treehouse and i'm like yep i'll be playing that for hours and hours and hours with my family like it just looks like stupid fun so for a franchise that is a bit of an also ran for nintendo they don't really give it a lot of um a lot of love uh they're they're really making this into something which could be a franchise that would kind of like flip flop between Mario releases. So you get your your Mario Odyssey 2 and then maybe you get Luigi's Mansion 4. Um, it, they're really making it into something that is more than just a, a small game that takes a couple hours to get through. And to me, that made me immediately want to pick up Luigi's Mansion 3 instead of waiting for a couple months after launch when I have a little bit of spare time to, to do something. And I didn't expect that. I, I know I wanted it, but I didn't know I wanted it day one. And they totally flipped that around at E3. Speaking of of launch, uh, Bobby, when do you think we're going to be getting Luigi's Mansion Three? Because we don't have a date. Uh, no. I mean, I know everybody's saying the same thing, but I'm curious if yeah. you if you agree that it's I, the October date. I feel like it is October. I, you know, I, I have these arguments with people on the internet all the time, and I just the last Luigi's Mansion that launched on the 3DS was in October, and I feel like it just makes sense. Um, and I think that it just it fits like that's the scary time of the year. You put it in that slot and just let it go and, and be done with it. I think when they announced that was the one that made me realize there's a problem with Animal Crossing. When they didn't lock that date in, I thought mm. something's not right here. Like because in my mind, I thought Animal Crossing September, uh, Luigi's Mansion in um, October, and then. Um, you know, Pokemon in November and then Zelda in, in December. So when they didn't lock in, I immediately was like, something's not right here. Something's not making sense. So yeah, I I think it's October. Dude, uh, you mentioned Zelda just so everybody's aware. We're we're not talking about breath of the wild. We're talking about uh, Link's Link's awakening. Awakening. Um, Mm -hmm. Did that surprise you, Bobby, that it's coming out in September? Yes. Again, I thought that was a December title. I yeah, thought that too. was the first week of December because they always have that title. First year was Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Then the next year was Smash. I thought like this just makes sense. 
it's it's a game that everybody gets they love it's it's going to bring back all the the old time players back to it it just makes sense because i also feel like or i thought anyway that was going to get a special edition console so it just made sense that that's a christmas time you're going to buy this and that's the way it's going to be and then when they put it in september i was like wow okay this is this is different this is going to be a different animal here but i'm happy that it's coming in september like i want it now after what i saw it looks fantastic yeah i i totally agree i'm excited for it definitely excited for it um it's going to be a day one purchase for me let's talk about other games that may or may not be day one purchases for us but for real quick let's take a second to thank our sponsors have you played atari today all right, and we are back. And uh, Lloyd, I'm curious, what are the what are the games on on the list here uh, from the Nintendo Direct or the Treehouse stuff that you saw and you were like, maybe maybe something that we didn't know about ahead of time that you saw and you were like, oh man, I've got to get that. Well, I, there's there's a few. Uh, I I don't want to I don't want to say them all. Well, in, just, in, just pick one. I'll well, pick one. Um, for me, one of the biggest surprises, uh, not necessarily a game that I'm. I want right now, I want to see more of it, but Panzer Dragoon coming back, like I thought that was a franchise that was completely dead. Um, I didn't play a lot of it when it was out. Um, no, almost no one I knew had a Saturn, so being able to play it uh, was really difficult. Um, but that just kind of blew me away. It's like, okay, like you have all these old development houses and these old developers and, and these old IP rights holders, and they're all like, yeah, let's put stuff out. Let's take our old game and let's put it on the Switch. And it, it just, it made me kind of shake my head a little bit and it's like okay we're getting panzer dragoon at this e3 what hidden gem are we going to get at next year's e3 and it's uh it just made me a little bit excited and plus it looked fantastic it it, it reminded me of the old game but it looked way better so that's a game that i'm going to want to play eventually when it comes out what about you bobby are, are you all about panzer dragoon no i got zero interest i could <laughs> you know like I, when i saw it i was like moving along I, just, I knew there was I knew there was a Lloyd in the world that was going to get excited for it. I'm not Lloyd in this situation. I was just like, no, I can't. I can't right now. So, no, that wasn't one for me at all. So for me, one of the games that I am very excited for that completely surprised me, I had no idea was coming, was the Dark Crystal, the Age mm. of Resistance Tactics. First off, stop with the giant crazy names, <laughs> video game people. Uh, but... This looks it, it first off, I adore the Dark Crystal. Like that is a that is a, a movie that I hold near and dear to my heart from when I was a kid. Um they nailed the look in this game. And for them to like the the way that they uh opened it up and they showed Mogra or whatever, I forget what her name is, uh talking, and I was like, what the hell is going on? And then it's a Final Fantasy Tactics style game. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be huge and it's going to be launching this year and we don't know when but sometime this year lloyd are are, are you a dark crystal fan are you going to be picking this oh, up yeah oh yeah for sure i i love the movie um we that's one of the movies that we want to watch with our kids and we just haven't yet but i it, we're definitely going to do it before the netflix series hits and um like there was other presentations at e3 where they're talking about netflix stuff so when this came up on netflix i'm like what why is, is nintendo partnering with them for the netflix flicks release like this is really weird and then they go right into a tactics game and i'm like holy crap, this is the game that I never knew I wanted that is now coming out. Like, how does this exist? Of course, I'm going to be picking it up. Yeah, it, it looks it looks really good. Um, I love I love the world. I love tactics games. So it just I don't know, it's peanut butter and uh, and and whatever you want to put on your peanut butter. Some people like jelly, some people like banana, whatever. I don't want to judge, uh, but it's that. The, the answer is chocolate is what you goes with peanut yeah. butter. Yeah, thank you. hundred uh, percent. Bobby, a lot of people are saying that because this dark the dark crystal thing is a netflix property that means that we should expect soon to get netflix on the nintendo switch what do you think man i i don't understand well okay i understand why but i really thought netflix was coming a couple of years ago um but i have a feeling that there was some exclusivity deals that went down between Nintendo and Universal to keep Netflix off right off Jump Street because of the whole theme park and all that stuff. 
then at this point, I'm like, I just don't understand now at this point. How is it not here? You got YouTube on there. You got Netflix or you got, you got Hulu. I don't understand at this point, two years later, why it's not there. It makes some sense. I mean, because you have Stranger Things as well coming. Uh, Stranger Things 3, the game. And I don't know if Netflix really has any. I'm sure they have some money making tie off of that as well. But yeah, it just it makes sense that it's got to be. You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't it? Gotcha. Uh, let me ask you guys a question, and and uh, we'll 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 ping pong back and forth. Uh, so Lloyd, I'm I'm asking you first. Demon X Machina. Uh, did you play the first off? Did you play the the demo? I did, and okay. I didn't like it. And you didn't like it. Did you watch the Treehouse stuff from yeah. Demon X Machina? I did, and uh, it completely changed my idea of what that game was going to be it looks fantastic now where it kind of looked i don't know half baked uh in the demo the action looks fantastic um seeing one of the one of the developers uh playing the game and and just kicking butt and and it just it looks fantastic i don't know if it's a day one purchase for me but it's a franchise that i was like oh that's kind of cool it looks awesome uh to something where i it's actually on my list now of games that i want to pick up Bobby, same set of questions, man. Um, yeah, I played it, thought it was trash. Leading into this whole thing, I was like, the best thing they can do is delay this game for a couple of years. Like, I, playing that demo turned me off so badly. I was just like, this is just garbage. Like, what are they, what are they thinking? Watching what I saw on Treehouse Live, I think I get what they did. They, they, they gave us an early build and, they because it looks totally different as well. Like we never got any of that character stuff in in the game. Like they got characters with different suits and all these different things. And like it looks ten times better in presentation. Like it looks crisp and sharp. The character models look really great. They did something. And like I said, I feel like they gave us an early build to demo it, and that's what it is. Now for me. I'm kind of in Lloyd's camp. It's it's a definite purchase for me now. Uh, I don't know if it's day one. It all kind of depends on where it falls in line of everything else that I'll be playing. Um, I think that's a big key to them. I, I still think they would be better off pushing that to like January, February of 2020. Um, just because Nintendo is setting themselves up to do what they've done the past couple of years. A heavy end of the year and nothing for the beginning of the year. And we don't know what's coming January, February for Nintendo. I would take this game and kind of push it a little bit because, it, you know, I think back to arms. I totally believe that if arms would have launched in year two, in January or February of year two of Nintendo, there's a different tale with arms and don't do this slow unlock. Like it's a fighting game. Give us everything. Let it go. I think arms actually does better in the longevity run of that game than when they put it out and then a month later here's Splatoon and it wipes it off the face of the earth. This is a similar thing. Don't put it, don't wedge it out there to get lost amongst some great games. Just push it to 2020 and don't be embarrassed by having to delay the game. Like, just say, like, strategically, it doesn't make sense. They are so packed. Not just Nintendo games. Everybody's coming this tail end of the year. Don't get, don't lose this game in the midst. This is definitely a good game that they need to push to just to a give it a little more time for polish and B you could also do like a direct in, in December to kind of just show off more of the game and, and give it the, the true clarity that it needs. I think that they're running the risk of hurting themselves with this game. If they, if they launch it in, you know, in the midst of all the stuff that's coming. When is it launching again? I can't remember. I'm trying to trying to find it right now. September 13th, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause September, September is, absolutely bananas i'm i'm yeah. trying to bring it up right now yeah here we go um so i'm gonna i'm gonna count astral chain as september because that's august 30th right mm -hmm. so august 30th is astral chain then we got spyro damon x machina nino kuni uh zelda Link's awakening dragon quest 11 s all all of those games are september and putting damon x machina in the middle of that is a huge huge mistake and i love the I so the the um the the analog that you drew or the parallel that you drew between this and arms because i've said that a hundred times that uh, they just put arms in the wrong spot and that's why mm -hmm. it fell on its face because that yeah. game is fantastic 
and nobody cared about it because it came out right before Splatoon and right after Mario Kart. Like, yep. could yeah. you have put it in a worst place? And I don't yeah. think you could have. Uh, I do mm. disagree about the slow rollout. I think that that keeps people coming back over time. Uh, but but the, you 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 drew a really good parallel there between those two games. It's not something that, that I would have thought of. Uh, yeah. Something else that I wouldn't have thought of is Contra Rogue Core. Um, I feel like, man, holy cow, this looked awful. Like, I, I, I've heard yeah. people who've played it that said that it was decent, but I think that this looks like a, a dumpster fire. Lloyd, how do you feel about it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it does not look good. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was that uh, worked on the Contra 3DS game. Um, I, I want to say Damon Baker, but that's not it. Um, but anyway, whoever was working on one of the other Contra games to then look at this and say, I don't know what they did with the video. I've seen this game in action and it looks way better than this. I don't know if they if they compressed it and then expanded it and we're not sure what they did but it looks terrible um so for someone that's worked on the contra ip before to kind of scratch their head after playing this game it makes me wonder if maybe nintendo just used the wrong asset in this video but it looks like a ps2 game a ps3 game like it's it doesn't look good and and to have such low res um, models with terrible textures and then to zoom really close for action scenes it's like what are you doing i right. want to be like I, I want them to be five pixels on my screen if they look that bad and i just want to be top down contra um i love contra as a, as a series but uh, this just made me uh, it's made me kind of shake my head a little bit and wonder why it was even included if it looked this rough the thing that you made me think of when you're describing how this game looks is i don't know if you've seen the meme of hank uh, uh propane hank man what the uh hank hill, hank hill. Uh, yeah. do i look like i know what a jpeg is you know that thing where it's <laughs> fallen apart because it's been copied so many times that's yeah. exactly what this looked like it yeah. looked so bad uh and, and you're saying that other people have played it and it looks much better than that yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, what I saw on Twitter right after the direct is people saying I've played this and it looks better than this. I don't know what this video came from. So I don't know if they played maybe a pre-production version, which looked better. And then they had to make it run faster. So they had to downscale everything. But I don't know for this game to be coming out in September and to, like the end of September and to look that bad. Um, it just makes me wonder, it, like, is it going to be a five dollar game <laughs> with microtransactions? Like, what, what are they doing? Like, it, it does not look good. And, and for Nintendo to spend time on it was just a real head scratcher for me. Do you have any interest in this at all, Bobby, in, in Contra Rogue Core? I, I mean, ultimately, I want I, I'm, I want Konami to come back into the big picture. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Because I feel like I'll be I'll be one that says it. I feel like there's two sides to every story, and I feel like the Kojima stuff. There's two sides to that, and I'm curious what the whole story is when it all comes out. And I feel like Konami is just the big corporate company, and they're taking a beating and a bath on the whole Kojima story. So for me, I'm excited as an old school Nintendo fan to see them starting to do stuff again. I mean, it started with, you know, Simon Belmont showing up with Smash. Then we get the Castlevania collection. Now we got the Contra collection. Like, I'm okay with this. Like, let's keep going. Um, it's one of those things of, do I support it just because I want to see them continue to make games? Or do I turn the other cheek to it and just turn a blind eye to it? So I'm still on the fence with it. Um but I'm sure we'll see, you know, better trailers, hopefully, um, before the game launches. And, it, it, of course, if it comes in like a five, ten dollar, like you just pull the trigger on it, then it might be something I just go, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. At it. So I'm on the fence a little bit, but I'm, I'm happy to see them doing something with that franchise. Awesome. Uh, so, Bobby, what else? What other games jumped out at you that you were like, uh, OK, I want to play this? Dude, the, the, the actual chain. Like that game, I was not a day one purchase of that. And then I watched the trailer during this and I was like, I'm in like day one. I'm buying it. I'm not even thinking about it. Like it looked so good. The one thing that I said was, I think that this proves one thing that platinum does fantastic work with their own licensing, with their own IP. When they get, when they get licensed titles, like the teams and, Mutant Ninja Turtles and Star Fox Zero. It's kind of like they just 
they write it in, they phone it in. They don't take as much care with something like a Bayonetta or this franchise. And for something that we didn't know even existed going into this year, to see how good this game looks, man, I am. It just gets me more excited each and every single time I see it. And like I said, that was a game that I was like, okay, I'll wait for reviews and see what it looks like. To I'm like, I don't care what they tell me. I want to go play this game. So I'm in on that one. Lloyd, are you, are, do you do you want to say anything about Astral Chain, or do you want to tell us about another game that you uh, that jumped out at you? Um, well, f- first I'll touch Astral Chain really quick. It looks better than it ever did, and a game that I was just like, eh, no, it's not for me, is now a game that I kind of want to play, which is which is great. Um, but one of the one of the the games that I was looking forward to prior to E3, but I was really worried about um, was Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm a huge Ultimate Alliance fan. I played Marvel Heroes for hundreds of hours and and leveled up all the characters. And I, I just love Marvel beat-em-ups. And I've, I heard some things prior to E3, which made me kind of really worried that this game is going to be garbage. And I was like, oh, come on, not my Marvel game. Um, they showed a really great trailer uh, during the direct and then what they showed in treehouse i'm 100 percent bought into this game again it comes out in a few weeks um uh, or i guess a month the 19th so yeah just over a month away um it, it looks fantastic it plays fantastic there's a, a bucket load of characters and dlc coming with more characters and that's that's all i want from this game so i was uh i was really happy with the showing that they did on this one since it is a nintendo exclusive i wondered really how much work is going to be put into it to make it an awesome marvel title and it looks like they they did that work and i'm uh i'm I'm super stoked for this in about a month's time something that i'm stoked for is final fantasy crystal chronicles remastered edition i i had this game on the GameCube back in the day, but I, I I also had a GBA and I had the GBA link cable, but none of my other friends had uh, those things. In fact, when I bought Crystal Chronicles, another buddy of mine went out and bought a GBA so that we could play it. And we had a lot of fun with it, but we never really got to experience what the whole game was like because You couldn't have four players. And now being able to get into Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles and play it with the four players without having to um, without having to buy all this extra crap uh, is just very, very exciting to me. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, Bobby, are you did you ever play the original? I did not. I did not. And and that's it's kind of strange for me because I bought up everything Final Fantasy growing up. Um, I mean, I even bought a PlayStation 1 because of Final Fantasy moving to to Sony. That was the only reason why I bought a PlayStation 1 was Final Fantasy 7. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not one that I I played growing up, but I had always heard good things about it, and it's definitely got my interest to go when it comes out and and get it and and play it with some some friends and such. So definitely got on my radar. Lloyd, are you going to be picking it up this winter when it when it releases? I think so. Yeah, I, d- I definitely think so. Um, I, I don't see why not. I, I'm probably going to pick everything up that was shown in this direct at some point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, right, I just I've I just it was such a great direct from top to bottom. It really was. Uh, the, one big surprise from that direct was The Witcher Three. Uh, mm. I know that there were a lot of rumors for it, but uh, the I want to say a good thing about it. And then I'm going to slam it hard. Uh, So first off, they fit the entire game and all of the DLC, which is a ridiculous amount of stuff, onto one cartridge. So CD Projekt Red, I just... Well, well done. I think that that's amazing. Uh, But good God, does it look like hot trash uh when they showed it in the like it looked bad uh what did what did you think about that bobby um see i'm not a person that's you know i'm not huge don't get me wrong i think everybody loves graphics i look at it and i was like i can't believe that this is on the switch and i think that's one of the things that like i'm looking at it as this the game like The Witcher Three is a game that I think everybody felt was what the Switch was going to be. Um, you're going to get the games that you want to play. 
you're going to take a hit on the graphics at times. This is one that you're taking a hit on the graphics, but I don't, I still want to see more of it. Um, so I guess we'll see as time goes on. And, and I don't agree when we're comparing it to graphics of the PS4 and the Xbox One, because I'm like, guys, this thing is, the, the Switch is not even as powerful as this. So as long as they're able to get it there to some degree, but it also screams how badly we need a Switch Pro, if anything, uh, something yeah. with a little bit more boost and power to it. So I'm I'm happy with it. Like you said, I'm I'm floored that they were able to fit it all in one cartridge. It makes me look at Konami and go, "What are you?" Or Capcom and go, "What are you doing?" Yeah, I mean, you can't even put <laughs> one game. You can't even put the Mega Man Legacy Collection on one cartridge, <laughs> and and you're gonna sit here and talk to me about this nonsense. So yeah, I'm I'm. It's it's a game I will buy. It's a game I will play. And not playing the previous version, I don't think it affects me at all. Now, if it was something where I had played the previous versions, it might be like, oof. But to me, I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it. Lloyd, what do you think, man? Yeah, I, I, Witcher looks looks good enough. I, I think portably it's going to look fantastic. I, I was a little bummed that it's not 1080p when it's in docked mode, um, but 720p with less uh, kind of makes me sad, but not not. A, not really sad i mean this is two full games essentially that is on this cartridge because a uh, blood and wine was essentially a whole other hundred hour game uh yeah. when that dlc came out um the 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 retail package looks fantastic. It comes with stickers and a poster and the, the lion pendant that, uh, that, he, that Geralt wears. Um, it, it just looks like a love letter to the game and a love letter to the Switch. And it's my hope uh, that sometime between now and release date, they can actually get the engine running a little bit better. Um, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe dial a panic button up on the bat phone and, and have them <laughs> uh, parachute in to fix things up a little bit. But I, I think... Like, realistically, if I want to play Witcher in portable mode, the graphics don't have to be crazy. And that's probably when I'd play the most of it. Um, I'm probably not going to play a lot of it docked because I would just play it on my PS4 if I was going to do that. Yeah, yeah. although it is 540p uh, in portable mode is what's been mm -hmm. reported, which that's just really, really low. And, and yeah. you know, I, I will say most of the time I'm not a graphics snob. But when I saw it, I was like, man, that just looks really, really bad. And yeah. it, it, you know what it almost reminded me of? Uh, either you guys have Labo. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It reminded me of when I watched Smash Brothers or Zelda in, on the Labo VR kit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, God. I mean, I know this game is pretty, but this is not pretty. Uh, it just it, that that's the thing that jumped out at me. Yeah. Uh, I think why I'm excited for this, though, is hopes that they will port over the Batman stuff, WB. I, like, if WB sees that it sells well, they might look at it and go, hey, why not let's push some of the Batman stuff over? Because they they published these games, right? Warner Brothers, if Did I'm they? not mistaken? I have I no idea. Warner, I thought Warner Brothers had some tie with CD Projekt Red where maybe they, they, they published the games or whatever. So regardless, I'm hoping that there's some type of eyeballs on it they go like let's bring over the arkham series now to switch so who knows lloyd is there any other games that you were like okay i definitely am am interested in this um, I mean, there's there's a like like I said, every every game was that they showed off was great. But I think we covered covered the biggest uh, the biggest and best of them. Uh, the one game that I am actually excited for that I wasn't uh, didn't really know about it um, much, didn't look into it was Trials of Mana, the remake yes. of the third mana game. Yeah. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, it, I, I actually was ready to pick up Collection of Mana. I was going to pre-order it, even though it comes out two months later. And I just can't that pre-order because i'm just going to get the trials of mana remake and play through that i don't need to play the the original games um but it, it looks fantastic it looks everything that i that i loved about uh, xenoblade and breath of the wild kind of rolled into one so it, it just looks fantastic and that was a total surprise to me yeah something that jumped out at me that i definitely want to check out when uh probably not day one but something i thought was cool is empire of sin mostly just it's like this top down game that takes place in the 1920s and you play as a gangster and i just thought that that's cool because that kind of thing never happens in games so i thought that was really neat uh bobby <laughs> last last game before we uh wrap uh, close up shop here 
Um, I mean, there's been it's so much. It, it, I mean, Dragon Quest Builders is a definite for me. Um, and and that's the thing. The, the the games that we're listing right now are why I've come to an okay world in my head. Why they pushed Animal Crossing because. Animal Crossing is going to eat up a lot of time, and I was actually getting nervous of, like, how am I going to play a game like Dragon Quest Builders? Because I love the first one, and I'm so excited for the second one. Because they took all that was good with the first one and just ramped it up and added some new stuff, some multiplayer stuff that they added to it. So it looks fantastic. I love the crafting elements of it. Like, it feels really good to play a game like this. So I'm, I'm this one is the one I'm really, really excited for. Awesome. So uh, let's let's go ahead and button this up, wrap everything up and put a bow on it and get out of here. Uh, if you are looking to become a part of the community over at uh, my discord, you can head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can watch the show live, except for this episode, of course, over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. And if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, I'm at runjumpstomp on Twitter. Uh, Lloyd, where can people find you on Twitter? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Dasme, D-A-S-M-E. And uh, where's all your other stuff? Just to re- recap and remind uh, yeah. everyone. Yeah, the Nintendo Pulse podcast is our uh, Nintendo show that we've been doing since 2006. So it's uh, crazy that it's been around for that long. And uh, you can check that out over at res.tv, R-E-Z-D dot TV. And Bobby, you got to convince everyone to go follow you. Where, where, where are people going <laughs> to find Bobby? Listen, at Nintendo Gurus on Twitter. Uh, I have a multitude of podcasts. If we ran Nintendo, Nintendo Talk, Breaking Bells, which is an Animal Crossing podcast, uh, Planet Nintendo podcast. Like I got plenty of podcasting under my belt. Um, YouTube.com slash Nintendo Guru. Like you, if you want to hear anything or see anything, you, you can find it. It's all over the place. So please do. Awesome. And you can find all my stuff at runjumpstomp.com slash shows. The music that you are hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Note Block. I will see you guys next time. Lloyd, Bobby, thanks for joining me. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks. See you.